Okay, this uh, second installment of Electric Current, which deals with potential and potential difference, um, is going to uh, look at an actual circuit and try to figure out how these things change as we go around. And we're going to try to tie that into what we learned about things when they fall in a gravitational field uh, in terms of their energy. So um, we have two different ideas here which have the same base word, potential. So the potential, symbolized by V, gives us an idea of how much work can be done on a charge as it moves through a certain point in a circuit. The change in that potential, so we bring in the word delta, uh, the symbol delta there for change, uh, is the potential difference, how much we have uh, gained or lost of our potential as we've gone between two points. Now since it's a difference, it does have to be between two points, whereas a potential is essentially at only one point. Um, also, since it's difference, all we're going to do to find it is subtract, if you're talking about the mathematics of it. Okay, so we have over here a diagram with a battery. The battery is a 12-volt car battery. Typical battery on a car is 12 volts. Um, the charge that we're going to be talking about moving around is going to be negative charge, little po tiny particles of uh, called electrons. Right? And they already exist in the wires. We're just going to start moving them around, and that's going to be the electric current as they move. Now, since they are negatively charged, they're going to be repelled by the negative terminal, and they're going to be attracted back to the positive terminal. The electric field in the wire is going to go, uh, in the battery, is going to go from plus to minus, like so. Okay. Now, <clears throat> to get the electrons over here to the right, as we saw in the first installment, they don't want to be over here on the right-hand side next to the negative terminal of the battery. So we're going to have to do work on them to get them over there. Uh, and a big idea going forward and a big idea, the, one of the big ideas you should take with you from physics is that the work we do is equal to the change of energy. So when the battery does work on the charge, it changes the energy of the charge, in this case increasing the energy, and then that's what's going to allow that charge to go around the circuit. Okay, so uh, if we look at the first one here, as the charge, the negative, moves through the battery from A to D, it's going to gain a potential energy. And then that means its new potential, its ability to do something at that negative charge, is going to be larger, so it has a uh, higher electric potential. Uh, within the battery, the highest point of uh, potential and therefore the highest point of energy available is there at the negative terminal. So once we've gotten to that point, we've increased it as much as we can. Now, how many joules we increase it will be determined by how much work we do and how much charge we happen to move through that space. Now, the analogy here is it's the same idea as taking a, say, a rock, and it has a mass of m, and it's on the ground at height zero, and then we push it to a new height using a force. We multiply that force, which is the weight of the object, times the distance, which is the height, and we now have a new potential energy. It now has the potential, the rock has a potential to fall. Now the more mass it has, the harder we have to push. Uh, the higher we push it, then the more uh, energy it gets. So we lifted it against the field. Uh, same kind of thing here. The negative charge does not want to go to the right. For the negative charge, the ground would be over here because it likes to go there. So we pushed it higher in potential, and therefore we had to do work on it. Now, that's since work has changed in energy, that's one reason why uh, a battery doesn't last forever. It uses up its energy to continually energize new electrons. Eventually, it runs out of the ability to do that. Okay, uh, and the second set, uh, if we go through the external circuit, external just means outside, so we're outside the battery. We're looking basically at this light bulb here. Uh, for our purposes, the wires are not going to be particularly important. We're going to assume that they don't do much in terms of work. Uh, they're just there to conduct the uh, charge from one place to another. Uh, as it goes from uh, D to A around that circuit, it's going to lose the potential energy, and it's going to lose its potential or ability to do something. Uh, the point of highest energy within the external circuit 
therefore is going to be closest to that negative terminal. That's where we have the highest energy. Okay? And then the electrons, because they want to get back to the negative terminal, they're going to give up their energy as they get closer and closer to the positive terminal. Again, that is the same analogy as we've got the rock up here at a height, okay, and we let it go. Gravity is going to pull it down. The higher it was when it started, the more mass it had, the more energy it would have, and then it would fall, and as it fell, it would give up energy uh, to the surroundings. Now, it's not going to give up any energy to other things until it actually makes contact with something or has to fight its way through something. So similarly here, the electrons really aren't going to lose their energy until they get to the light bulb. So it's when they go from C to D that they lose their energy. Uh, and we can tell that because the light bulb glows. And light's a form of energy. It had to come from somewhere. Well, it came from the energy that the electrons had. So in falling over here, the object really wouldn't have uh, done much work to anything else. It, but it would have been losing its energy and turning it into speed. So because it's turning into speed, it could then regain that energy when it hits something by using its kinetic energy. Uh, with the electrons, uh, as they uh, go through, they don't turn it into something else like its own kinetic energy. It's a non-conservative force, so they give the energy off, uh, most often in the form of heat, also in the form of light, also in the form of like a motor turning something uh, there are a number of different things the electrons can do for us. Now again, that um, potential change, potential difference, really occurs as we go through the light bulb. So that's from C to B. Now, since C is closer to the negative charge of the battery where we have our maximum uh, a potential or ability to do something, it's going to have a higher potential than we will have it be. So the potential V at point C is larger than B. Now again, in between these other two points, the wires don't really do very much. They're kind of like having conservative forces. We might be thinking of the electrons changing their um, motion, their energy into motion, uh, although they still move at what's called a drift velocity, and we'll talk about that later. So you'll often hear the term of voltage. Right? Voltage is the generic term we use for this idea of potential. Uh, it's because it's measured in volts. It's really a person's name. It's not very descriptive or helpful, but that's what everybody commonly uses. So don't be surprised if you hear it plenty of times. And then when we talk about going through a, a battery, we often talk about it as a voltage rise or a voltage gain. That's because the potential is being gained. It's being increased as we go through those. Now, the analogy, the opposite of the analogy, when you go through a light bulb or a resistor or something that uses the energy, like a motor, then we often talk about it as a voltage drop. Like dropping the rock over here, it's giving up its potential to do something else. So when you, in a circuit, when you use the energy, we call it a voltage drop. We have less potential than we had before. And then if you increase the potential, we call it often a voltage rise to be the opposite of the drop. Uh, another analogy here is the stairs. Uh, we'll talk about that when we look at the diagram. Okay, so those are very important terms and they're very subtly different uh, and they take some thinking. You gotta try to tie it back to your previous study of gravity and other things you've understood about the world. Uh, that's it for this episode.